Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick. I'm Damo. So today we've got another baseball video for you and you know we love the rules and learning all about the rules of baseball. Uh, today we've got what is a bulk in baseball. So you've been hitting us up in the comments on Discord telling us that we need to have a look at this one off the back of the infield fly video. So yeah, I hope I said that right. But you're looking forward to this one. Yeah, we're going to call this bulk all the way through. So I really bulk. hope that is how you say it. <laughs> yeah. But regardless, we're, we're going to sort this out for you today, okay? We're going to get to the bottom of this. Everyone's going to leave the video knowing exactly what a bulk is. Exactly. So yeah, enjoy. <laughs> What's up, baseball players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video... Not Dan Carter. I know I did call him Dan Carter in a previous video. But Coach Dan Blewett, we had him on a previous video. He was brilliant. So we thought with the material he puts out, we'll come back to him again. Yeah, so we're going to go over what is a balk in baseball? What are all the balk rules that you need to know? And at the very end, I'm going to give you a ton of tips on pretty much how to eliminate most of these balks from your game. It's going to be annoying all right, if so it keeps recognizing here, I'm it's Coach box. Dan. I'm a former <laughs> pro pitcher. So I've got a lot of experience on the mound, obviously, and everyone is balked no matter how long you've played. It still happens in the major leagues. But here's the thing. With today's video, I'm going to put timestamps in the description below so you can jump around to the different rules and stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a flow, basically what you're supposed to do pre-pitch, how you should set up that's going to make it a lot easier to rarely, if ever, balk. Because once you get the hang of most of this stuff, Balks are, are pretty rare and they're pretty easy to avoid. So I'll give you those tips towards the end. And last, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Check out my two pitching books, which you'll find in the description along with other pitching resources. Okay, first thing to get this out of the way, what is a balk? What's the definition of a balk? A balk is intentionally or unintentionally deceiving the runner. That's like the kind of like generic definition everyone holds. But basically what you really need to know is that balking is either screwing up a pickoff move, it's flinching when you've come set, it's coming set improperly. Those are the main different things, the main different ways that you're gonna balk. I'm gonna go over all of them in this video, but don't think of balking so much as deceiving the runner, because that's just a vague term. It doesn't have much value as a definition. Think of balking is as excess movement, flinches, screwing up pickoff moves, and stuff like that once you've already come set because this is all going to come around the set position for pitchers and what happens after you've come set and some of the things that happen before you come set those are where all the balk rules come into play all right so let's get to it number one first balk rule so once you've come into your set position and you've stopped and i've got other videos that cover this if you're not familiar with the stretch position once you've come set the only thing you can move is your head and your eyes so if you twitch your knee, if you move your shoulders, if you just lazily turn, all those things are going to constitute a balk. All right, the second balk rule, you can't start your delivery and then stop it. And that could look like a couple different things. It could be, and I just stopped, or say I went through my delivery and I was about to pitch and then I saw the batter stepped out, or I started my delivery and someone yelled, you know, pick the first, pick the first, or he's going, he's going, and I get nervous and I stop. If you start your delivery and then you stop, it's gonna be a balk. All right, so the next balk rule is you can't fake to first base without stepping off the runner. So this applies to both righties and lefties. If you're a lefty, obviously you'll have this hang move to first base. And as a righty, you're gonna have this quick move to first base. When you're throwing to first base on a pickoff move, you can't fake. So I can't do this pickoff move and not throw it. I have to throw it. Now, if you step off the rubber, Essentially, that makes it not a pickoff move anymore. Essentially, now you're just a regular fielder and you're off the rubber. You can do whatever you want, throw to any base you want. But when you're doing the traditional, like specified pickoff to first base, whether you're righty or lefty, without stepping off, which is this, you have to throw to first base. All right, rule number four here. What do you reckon is easier to pick off, <laughs> lefty or righty, if you're trying to pick off first base? I'm trying to imagine it. If... I think probably right. I don't know, there's a lot more body movement involved with right. You probably get more force, but then you're only going first base. Surely left, you have to turn your whole body and then swing well, yeah, your left. Yeah, you just Yeah. I don't know, what's easier? Is it easier with right? Maybe it is. Probably because your arm you know, automatically comes round, doesn't I haven't it? Got so, the, we haven't got the baseballs with us, that's the right. problem. <laughs> but I think there's, you have to actually turn your whole body to then throw to first with your left. With right, you can just swing. You can turn your upper body, can't you? <laughs> It'd be freaky <laughs> just seeing someone turn around. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be fair though, this is making a lot of sense so far. Yeah. So I'm aware we're not too far into this and it's going to get a lot more confusing. I get what he said about um, you can't, not deceiving. Um, yes. Which is very vague, but I get it, it makes sense. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm glad he's breaking them all down for, for us. And this is going to be a balk if you pick off to an unoccupied base. So if I have runners on first and second, and I lift my leg and I throw to third base and they're not running there, they're not stealing there, I just throw to an unoccupied base, that's gonna be a balk. Same thing if I have a runner on first and I do a pickoff move to second and there wasn't anybody there, that's gonna be a balk. Now, if someone is stealing to that base, so say a runner takes off and somehow I realize it really late and I decide to do a spin move to second and the runner was going, that's not gonna be a balk. It's only if the base is truly unoccupied where no one's running there or no one was occupying that base. The other common area where this would, with this would happen would be if you'd run on second and you did the pickoff move, which is called the inside move, which might pull a runner, he kind of takes off and he's halfway. Now you can throw it to any base you want because there's a runner who might go to the next base. But the, again, the bulk rule here is that you can't pick to a purely unoccupied base. All right, the next bulk rule is that you have to come stop when you're in the stretch position. So what this means is after I get my sign, and I come set, there has to be a discernible pause to my delivery. Then I can pitch the plate. There's no set time. A lot of times you hear it as like a one second, like you have to come set for one second. That's not really a rule. You just have, it ha have to have a discernible stop, and that's gonna be the umpire's discretion. Um, this rule gets called a lot. This is a pretty common one. You'll see it in youth baseball a ton, where pitchers just get in a rhythm, and they just wanna get the ball and throw, and they're not really coming to that stop position where a runner knows that he's set. That's why it's a balk. So on this one, you just need to get in the habit. Now this is gonna look different for everybody because some, some pitchers sometimes will have really elaborate things where they're getting comfortable. They can keep moving as long as eventually they have a stop. So it can look a lot of different ways, but there has to be a discernible pause to the delivery before they make their pitch. All right, the next baseball balk rule is you can't do a quick pitch. And what this means is this doesn't mean what I just talked about, which was coming to a set and stopping. Sometimes you'll hear that as a quick pitch. Oh, he quick pitched me, you know, if you don't come set in time or if you don't have that big stop. What quick pitching means is I'm on the rubber and I'm set and I'm ready to deliver my pitch and the batter's just now getting in the box and he's not ready and then I deliver it. So even if time was called and, or if time was in and I'm ready, I can't just be so ready to just like pump it in there. I have to sort of wait for the tempo of the game to be at its kind of like, there's a pace to baseball, right? So you just have to make sure the hitter is set and ready to go. So this one, again, is not the pause and go. This one is you can't just be ready and just trying to ambush the pitcher and throwing a pitch in there or ambush the batter and throw one in there before he's ready. That's what a quick pitch is. All right, next one, and this one is common. Is there a rule around when batters must be set? Because I did see one the other day in a live game where the pitcher was set. Mm. And the batter was kind of just, you know, making their way over, swanning their way over. It was okay, though, because it was a Padres player. Uh, but by the time he was actually ready, there was only four seconds left on the clock, on the pitch yeah, clock. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I, well, like, nothing was called about it. The pitcher didn't say anything. The pitcher right. just got on, and it was thrown with two seconds left, and everyone moved on like nothing had happened. Yeah. And I was just left there on my own thinking... I suppose if... Maybe, I'm just making this up. <laughs> if, if the pitch does <laughs> get delivered the late, they could then say, well, it was the fault of the, the hitter for not being ready in time. Like I was ready and set to yeah. pitch, and I couldn't. The time had run out. I don't know. Is that right. a thing? Yeah. Yeah, it, let, let us know, because I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. I know it's not particularly what this video is about as but such. You but can, can you quickly, can you see why some of these rules will be subjective? Oh, um, definitely. I, I'm noticing as we're going further in, they're getting more and more subjective. Yeah, definitely. So already I can see some of that coming into play. This writing at the bottom, by the way, is this ours, or is this part of the video? The, where it says one is common with younger pitchers who are still That's learning. part of his video. Oh, okay, yeah, because yeah. it's off so many incorrect words. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think it's auto-generated. Uh, ah, yeah. okay, gotcha. I'm with younger pitchers who are still learning the uh, the balk rules here, but once you've come set, in addition to not being able to move your body, and again, only moving your head, you can't separate your hands a second time. So this is there's two applications for this. Number one, when you get your sign, you can't. It's been have perfect your hands ever together, since I said it now. <laughs> then separate them, then bring them together again. So when I'm teaching young pitchers how to use the stretch position, you need to keep your hands separated at all times until the only time when they come set. They come together 
and this is when they're separated. And they can't move again until I start to go to the plate. So you can't come set, that sounds... move your hands. That can't be part of your delivery. So again, you could have your stretch position and, and have a lot of wacky movement in it, and that's okay, getting settled. But what you can't do is have this kind of movement or a bunch of taps, something like that, as part of your delivery. Once your hands are separated, which they should be early, once they come set, they or once they come together, they've got to then stay together the entire time until you then deliver the ball. That's a common balk rule that can yeah, be tough to understand. Easy. All right, this next balk rule is you can't drop the ball once you've come set. And this one's kind of unfortunate. It's not something you would intentionally do, but you do see it happen once in a while, sometimes in the big leagues, sometimes in youth baseball. A lot of times pitchers are just swirling the ball around and you're actively getting your grip as you come up. And sometimes you'll just lose your grip and that's a balk. All right, this next bulk rule is, is from the rule books. I've, I don't really exactly know what this looks like in practice, but you have to pitch facing the batter. So I suppose what this rule is, and I asked around trying to get interpretation from different players and some coaches that I knew, but basically you can't, I suppose, be completely facing second base the entire time before you deliver the ball. Oh, so okay. at some point sense. you have to look back. I mean, you can start your leg kick, but at some point you've got to look back towards right. home plate so in the rule book it says you can't throw a pitch facing away from the batter again this is one of those things that you're not really going to have to need to know because there's no good reason to ever do that but it is in the rule book as one of the bulk rules all right and the 10th and final bulk rule here that's really relevant for your game because then we're going to cover four more that are that are rules that are not super relevant is that you have to do the proper pickoff footwork so for example when i'm picking to first base my right foot has to be the one that moves first, making that pick off as a, as a pitcher. So if this one goes first, and it looks like that, where you saw my left foot bob first, that's gonna be a balk. So proper execution of pickoff moves is a important balk rule. It doesn't really fall into any of the categories. Like it's not really like extra movement. I, I guess it technically is, but I feel like this is its own category to remember. So you have to, to learn these pickoff moves properly. You know, as a lefty, again, if this was first base, if I'm doing my hang move to first, you know, I've got to step within this 45 degree imaginary line towards first base. So I can't look like I'm going directly home. Otherwise, umpires will call that a balk. So, you know, executing these legal pickoff moves, there's another one. So the second, once, um, you know, once my foot crosses the rubber, so if I lift my leg, if my foot crosses over here, I have to go home. So if you lift your leg like this, you now have to go to the plate. So as a lefty pitcher, that's enough. Are you thinking about him going on? <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine a pitcher actually doing it over the rubber and going, <sighs> See you later. Off straight out of the game. <laughs> Honey, I'm, all, I'm, I'm coming home. <laughs> um, yeah, that one. That There's crazy subjective, that one. But, um, yeah. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh. Should we press play until you yeah, it's got, My mind's gone blank. So that's normally me, to be fair. Yeah, I know. Just that's the reason. reason. You don't want to lift your leg straight up to avoid balking if you're going to pick off. Um, you know, there's execution of, you know, the inside move to second base, which I have videos of. So again, the proper footwork for pickoffs is another way you can get called for a balk. Okay, so now let's cover... He just reminded me then. I had no idea there was... You could only move your feet a certain way when doing a pickoff attempt. There never no. there was any rules around that. No, um, definitely. But yeah, that is... In that split second, you see him go and you got, you got to remember to... Yeah... I'm still Crazy. waiting for a successful pickoff anyway. I, mean, I mentioned it in a recent video. I just haven't seen one. They must happen, but I just really want to see one in a game I'm watching. I, cause, I saw um, one. Um, Cubs raised the other night. Who, who got the successful pickoff? Uh, Cubs got caught stealing. Uh, okay, yeah. nice. There are four more ways you can balk in baseball that really aren't very common that you probably won't encounter, but it's good just to know, especially if you're a young coach or you're a young player and you just want to make sure you could you've thought through all the different ways that you can screw this rule up. So number one, and this would be the 11th rule of the day, is that you can't go on to the rubber without the ball. So again, I don't know why you'd ever do that, except if you're doing basically the hidden ball trick, and that's why I think they have this rule. So if you don't have the ball in your possession, you can't step onto the rubber. So pitchers are gonna be um, out here somewhere. I don't even know if they go on the mound without the ball. So again, if you come up on the rubber and the umpire figures out that you've done this, he's gonna call you for a ball because you have to have the baseball to be essentially on the dance floor. All right, this next balk rule 
you can't unnecessarily delay the game. This one could apply to you, but it really should never apply to you. But if you just keep coming set and you're holding for like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the umpire's like, hey, come on, speed, the, like, speed it up, speed it up. And you're just taking forever, or if you're just pacing around the mound between pitch. I wonder if this one's less relevant now that the pitch clock's pitch clock, come yeah, into play. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You're just taking too long. That's the it umpire's sense, punishment, so. essentially, mm -hmm. is to say, hey, that's a balk, and the runners advance one base. The next balk rule is that you can't perform any part of the pitching delivery when you're not on the rubber. So that means you couldn't set up here and try to dupe the runner into thinking that you're on the, on the, on the, the rubber and then do your delivery. So you couldn't be straddling the rubber and do your delivery. That would be a balk. You can only do your delivery, and it looks like delivery, and that's, again, for deceiving the runner, which is part of the, the, the terminology about what a balk means. You can't do any of your delivery except when you're on the rubber itself. And then the last way to balk here is actually on the catcher. The catcher has to have at least one foot in the catcher's box and definitely check your local league rules because this might change depending on the level that you're at. You also might, might not have a catcher's box drawn at all, but when there is a catcher's box drawn and when umpires are on top of this rule, basically the catcher has to be in the box and that is especially important for an intentional walk. So when you intentionally walk someone, the catcher has to you know, give the sign he has to stay in the catcher's box until you've delivered the pitch, until you've like delivered it, and then he can jump out and catch it. So that's important if the catcher you know, screws that rule up and he's trying to just stand out there in no man's land to catch your intentional walk, then the umpire's gonna call you for a balk. And you're gonna be pretty angry at your catcher too. Okay, so we've gone through all the balk rules. What we need to do now is go over the things that you should do as a coach you know, to teach your players or as a pitcher yourself to avoid these balks. And it's really not that hard. Number one, is having the, the right flow before pitches. So you're off the, the mound. Once you get onto the mound and the hitter is getting ready to get in the box, the first thing you're gonna do is straddle the rubber. Now when the hitter gets in the box, you're gonna put your rear foot, so I'm a righty, so I'm just gonna talk in right-handed terms, and put this foot on the rubber. Then I'm gonna widen up so I get my sign, and that's gonna allow me to come set all in one motion and avoid the start, you know, the. The, the two hands thing, it's going to avoid any issues of like having too much movement. Basically, I'm just going to get comfortable coming in all up into my stretch position in one fell swoop. So the only time my hands come together, the only time this left foot sets down is in the same exact position every time. And that's going to eliminate, again, all those little, oh, I'm uncomfortable, I want to move, or my hands are in the wrong spot, or again, extra movement makes it more likely that you'll balk. So that's number one, is having the right pre-pitch flow. And then the, the second thing is having a good mental pre-pitch checklist, which is I know where the runners are, I know my duties as a pitcher, I know what's gonna happen if they yell he's going, I know which place I'm gonna throw the ball if I get a comeback or if I get a bunt. That's not gonna impact me, bunt, me, me balking, but having an idea of everything that could possibly happen before I deliver my pitch is gonna make me less susceptible if someone yells, yeah, he's running, he's running, he's running, step off, step, step, step off, step off. That's going to make me less nervous to go, oh no, what? I, I, don't, I wasn't ready for that scenario, I wasn't prepared. When you hear things that you're not prepared to hear, when, people, when your fielders yell at you, that's a good time to... Joe, this bit does actually make quite a lot of sense now because I've seen it before where like someone's getting ready to pitch. The pitcher's mm. getting ready to pitch, not just someone, a crowd member. Anyone, yeah. yeah, that's it. Anyone's getting... <laughs> and yeah, they're getting ready to pitch and all of a sudden they'll just like... And they'll have a real look around, like yeah. at the situation, it's, it's just so they the can. Situation. Yeah, and they obviously the re the reason I notice is because they do it like so intense. But I suppose it's to yeah. get it in here. Yeah. They know exactly where yeah. everyone is. Well, exactly about what he's explaining. Avoiding uh, balking. I suppose most pitchers would have like a, a pre pitch routine where they would do a certain thing, certain movement. Yeah. But if they do that over and over again, yeah. there's less chance of them yeah. committing a... Yeah, because I get family. sometimes you might think, oh, I'm not comfy, but if you yeah. follow that, then that's going to yeah. happen less. The pitchers, they'll have that, like, you know, that jittery, oh no, they flinch, and they balk. That's probably the most common balk besides the not coming set one, where they you don't stop and pause long enough. The other big balk is when things go on on the base paths, runners are doing unexpected things, and pitchers are not mentally prepared to handle it, and so they go, oh, I don't know what to do. And then they end up flinching, and that's a balk. It could happen with a runner on third where they're looking at him. It could happen with a runner on second. It could happen because your coach or your infielders or your catcher yell at you as a pitcher, 
and that startles you and then you balk. Those are the biggest things you need to understand. It's the mental checklist, being ready for all different scenarios and being comfortable and relaxed and saying, even if you hear something yelled at you, the number one thing is what? You need to step off first. Once you step off, you can do anything. That's the big lesson as a young pitcher is if you hear something or you're not comfortable, step off and then you can assess and fix it. But you can't you know, flinch and you have to be mentally ready to let all those yells and potential weird things that happen just flow through your mind and not impact the pitch you're about to throw, okay? So hopefully today's video was helpful. I know it was long. There's a lot of bulk rules, but it's really not that complicated of a thing, especially if you're from another country, if you're just learning baseball, the bulk rules can seem really confusing, but at the end of the day, once you come set, the only thing you can move is your head. You can't flinch, so you have to be mentally ready to not flinch. And once your hands come set, you need to have a pause and you can't separate them again. Those are the biggest things. It's really not that hard to not balk, but again, these rules are something that you need to go over over and over when you're a kid. And I know that's why there's a lot of great umpires who when kids balk when they're young, they'll go out and explain the rule and help them understand so they don't continue to do it. And that's a good thing about growing the game and umpires helping young players improve as well. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. I, yeah. think, I think there's a full breakdown. So yeah, it was good. To be fair, the summary I was going to give, and I had it all prepared and ready to deliver to everybody. He just Dan blew it, just jumped in and just delivered it at the end of that video. Yeah. So it's almost like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just going to sign that off as what he said. Yeah. But yeah. no, I think I think I think I do get it. I get it's going to be subjective, and I get sometimes the umpire is going to make a call, and everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, what? But then that yeah. just seems to be the way it is. Yeah. That's um, it. But yeah, that's it. it seems yeah. straightforward enough. It's um, obviously. We kind of know what a bulk is, but then we yeah. might say, oh, he balked, and someone will be like, no, yeah. he didn't. No. I had no idea before this video, um, to be fair. Yeah, Absolutely no, none. No. So, yeah, it was really well explained. I really enjoyed that. If you want to see us looking at any other rules and um, taking us through this journey that we're on, please let us know down in the comments. Got some on there, but yeah, never never have too many. So, yeah, no, thank definitely. you for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and share. It really does help us to grow the channel. We'll see you on the next one.